What's up guys? Welcome to hopefully a very promising 2024. I've put this video together to just highlight the essentials of what it is you guys need to do in order to get yourself into the very best shape of your lives. Now, this always seems to be the case this time of the year that everybody really overcomplicates things and takes certain things to the extreme, whether it be on the nutrition side of things or the training side of things. They'll usually tend to ramp up the training, do five to six workouts per week, do excess cardio on top of that. And with the nutrition, they'll usually be extremely restrictive in terms of calorie intake and the foods that they eat, for example, just not consuming carbs or not consuming sugar, whatever it might be. So whatever plan that you are going to be following, don't do anything too extreme because you simply don't need to be doing that. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we just want to follow an approach and a lifestyle which you can continue to follow every single month of the year because ultimately that is what is going to deliver the best results and allow you to be consistent in the long run. The first thing I would do is have some basic understanding of the foods that you're eating and understanding proteins, carbs, and fats. For those people that have tracked before and they understand good, for those people that have never done it before, I recommend you start doing it now. It's not something you necessarily have to do forever, but you need to have some understanding of what is in the foods that you are consuming and how your body will respond to different macro splits and calorie intake. So, First thing you need to do, the most important thing, is to calculate your protein requirements. For most people, it should be around 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. Second thing, you need to stick to or at least pick some sort of total calorie intake. Most people probably will have no idea what that should be. Okay, so for most men out there who are looking to build a decent physique, they're going to the gym, they're doing resistance training, just pick somewhere between 2,500, 2,750. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, if you want to have a muscular physique and you're going to be training frequently, you need to be consuming enough calories to allow for optimal performance, recovery, and for muscle growth to actually take place in the first place. In terms of carbs and fats, they really can vary a little bit. It doesn't really matter a huge amount, just as long as you're not doing anything excessive. I don't really believe in completely cutting out a macronutrient group. Once you've figured out the targets which you are going to aim for on a daily basis, you then need to decide how many times you're going to eat per day and what are the foods which are going to allow you to hit those numbers. There is no optimal frequency of meals that you should be consuming on a daily basis, but it would make sense if your goal is to build muscle or have some sort of a muscular physique to aim between four and five meals per day to allow protein synthesis to occur for the majority of the day itself and to actually make it easy for you to consume all of those calories because trying to consume Two and a half to 3,000 calories in a six to eight hour feeding window might be difficult for some of you. It's not for me, but it might be for some of you. Once you've done this and you've been consistent with it for a couple of weeks, you will notice your body will start to change. Hopefully it's going to improve. All you'll need to do is adjust your nutrition intake based on how your body has responded to this. So let's say, for example, if you've lost too much weight too quickly, more than half a kilogram on average per week, then it would make sense to consume more calories. If you've been gaining weight too quickly, more than 0 0.1, 0 0.2 kilograms per week, then it would make sense to reduce your calorie intake. So every single week, you should be tracking how your body has responded, weighing yourself, and obviously, most importantly, checking your visual changes. And then based on that, make the tweaks to your nutrition so that you can allow for continued progress throughout the year. One of the biggest mistakes at the start of the year is most people are not consuming enough calories. They decide to themselves, I need to get rid of the fat, I need to do it quickly, so I'm gonna eat less than 2,000 calories because I want fast results, I want it now. The problem is, if they do this, First of all, they're not consuming enough calories to fuel their workouts, perform at their best and recover. They're also not consuming enough calories to build or maintain muscle mass. And they're not consuming enough calories to have a decent life. You know, it's going to be pretty damn miserable. No doubt. If you've done it before, you'll understand. So they end up, if they stick to this for a reasonably long period of time, losing a lot of weight and becoming a skinnier version of themselves to the point where they end up being skinny fat. They can't lose any further body fat because they're not eating enough calories in the first place and doing too much cardio. The focus of January should just be to optimize the quality of the foods which you are consuming and just making sure that your macro split is a lot better than it was in December, which you probably had no idea what it was. So consuming enough protein, good quality carbohydrates, good quality fats, 
should be the priority for this month. The next thing you need to do is pick a training program which you are going to stick with over the next couple of weeks, five, six, seven, or even eight weeks, depending upon how long you can see continued progress with it. The training program should be suitable in helping you to achieve your goals and not too extreme. So for those people who are just starting out for the first time, or it's been a while since they've been going to the gym, picking a routine which is getting you to the gym three to four times per week is going to be enough. It doesn't need to be more than this, okay? Just pick something which you're gonna to stick to. I've got a load of splits on my app, which are catered for all levels of experience. And I've just released a new one, two new ones actually, which I highly recommend you go and check out. And one of the reasons why it's so important for you to follow a training split is because it holds you accountable. It's something which encourages you to go to the gym. It's a way for you to track progress, to see that you are improving on the lifts that you're doing on a week to week basis. And it also forces you to do the exercises that you should be doing. So say for example, if you followed a split, which is making you train legs twice per week, doing that split is gonna be pretty damn efficient at making sure you do your leg session twice a week. The next thing I want you guys to do is to stop obsessing over scale weight. I know a lot of you guys still do this, so stop doing it because Although scale weight can be a good indicator at seeing how your body is responding to how much food you're consuming and the activity that you're doing, but it's not the only way to determine your rate of progress or success, okay? Your weight could stay the same or it could actually increase over time, but simultaneously your body composition could improve, okay? You could gain muscle and lose body fat whilst your weight isn't actually doing a whole lot. And ultimately, it's going to be going up and down and all over the place. I would say it's a good indicator is to see whether you're progressing or not in terms of whether you're trying to obviously build muscle and gain weight so obviously you want to be improving and in increasing your weight over time around 0.2 kilograms per week maximum but for everybody else i wouldn't stress about it too much photographs every three to four weeks are going to be the best way to see how your body is changing over time but for most men it's not something you want you don't want to lose weight you don't want to be a smaller skinnier version of yourself let me put it to you this way would you rather be 80 kilograms at 10 percent body fat or 90 kilograms at 10 percent body fat most of you should want to be at 90 kilograms at 10 percent body fat why because first of all you're going to look bigger you're going to be stronger you'll be able to lift more at the gym and your metabolism is going to be a lot faster so you'll be allowed to get away with eating more food without you actually putting on any body fat and the final point is just being consistent with these good habits over time ideally throughout the whole year imagine if all of you guys having this mindset in january were able to keep it up with your good routines your training habits and your eating habits over the 12 months your body is going to be pretty damn good. The problem is people, for whatever reason, cannot seem to be able to stick to the good habits which they have in place in January. And as I've mentioned before, it's probably because they're overcomplicating it and doing things to the extreme, which is just not sustainable in the long run. So let's say, for example, with your food, if you're on point with your food and you're tracking your calories, you're hitting your targets for five, six days out of the week, that's still good. If you have a day or two days where you don't really track and you, you know, you're still eating healthy, but you just maybe you didn't hit the numbers that you wanted to hit. That's not the end of the world. If you're going to the gym every single week, but maybe you have the odd week here and there where you don't get as many sessions in, but you still manage to go to the gym, that's still good. The biggest mistake that people make is something happens which causes them to just stop going to the gym completely or stop eating properly over a long period of time. And that is the thing which ruins everything. Like you cannot build a decent physique if you're having these extended periods of time where you're just not training or you're not eating properly. It just doesn't work like that, okay? So you have to be more disciplined. You need to hold yourself accountable and you just need to be consistent, okay? You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to do anything drastic. If anything, you just need to figure out what is that thing that always seems to knock you off track and make sure that you have a plan B for if that happens or just make sure that that thing doesn't happen at all. For me, the biggest thing which always sets me off track is two things, alcohol consumption and binging having cheat meals. When I consume alcohol, what that does is it completely destroys my willpower. 
It ruins my strength, ruins my consistency, destroys my good habits. When I do cheat, I notice that I usually can't keep it under control and I end up going into an excessive calorie surplus on the day that I do cheat. And then the next day, I just find it a lot harder to get back on track with eating the things that I should be eating because my gut bacteria has changed, my taste buds has, has changed. I just want to eat dirty, cheap foods the day after I've eaten dirty, cheap foods. So if I can just cut them out and just have, instead of a cheat meal, a refeed meal, that usually works out for the best. So hopefully this has been a useful video for you guys. I know it might be obvious for quite a lot of you, but it really, in my opinion, is not that complicated. Just stick to the basics, be consistent with it, and you are gonna get the physique which you have always wanted. Thanks for watching, see you soon.